Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're here to talk about True Detective Season 4, Night Country. And as always, I have here with me Ramon. <laughs> hey guys. And Ro. Howdy, howdy. Guys, I'm excited to talk about this. And there's a big reason why I wanted to talk about this show. And it's something that I cannot wait to the end. And I gotta ask the question right now. But, what? And I need your sincere, honest opinion on this. Is Jodie Foster in this show hot? Is she an attractive woman? Uh, if she came to your door right now, what would you do? Bro, spots on you, man. <laughs> oh, my God. I was not expecting what I saw. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, nothing says that age means that you can't get it. <laughs> so, what age, though? What age is she even? I don't even know. I don't know. That's what made it so confusing I, as I was watching. I, I, I think she's <laughs> meant to be in her like I don't know fifties, maybe upper forties. I don't Probably know, like mid fifties, late fifties, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'll let her handcuff me. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was a weird feeling, man, because I hadn't seen her in so long, and here yeah, comes no. here comes this uh, teacher I used to have in the you know in the back in the day, <laughs> and she still looks great. <laughs> and then, you know I wasn't expecting that, but uh, sorry guys, I I just wanted to know where you stand stand on that because yeah, like the whole time I thought she just looked amazing, man, like. I need more of her. <laughs> yeah, so much of cosplay is her. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank good. you for uh, noticing. <laughs> but uh, all right, all right. Now that now that we know where we stand with that, let's let's really talk about the show. Ro, this was the first time you have ever seen a true detective anything. So, what did you think about this season, man? Um, it it was interesting. So, so I thought it was gonna be all like I don't know more law enforcement e. <laughs> and 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 exclusively just like detectiving or de detecting detectizing whatever <laughs> and then uh i thought it was just going to be like about that and trying to figure out a case and all that stuff but then th there were these like supernatural type like undertones throughout the whole show that mm -hmm. i was actually kind of a big fan of it, it kind of gave me a, a midnight mass kind of vibe yeah. a little bit yeah. but a lot less creepy <laughs> yeah. uh yeah, but I I I, I kind of dug the the supernatural part of it. I loved the fact that it was like the the indigenous and the like uh, uh, Inuit type of uh, influence that it had, and 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 I don't know. I, I I liked it, and I like I like how the setting played such a big role in in the case and and everything. So it it was it was it was interesting for sure. No man, that setting. I mean, you right away. It's like starts with the first. I think it's. I guess it's like the last day of sun, and you know, it's a pretty creepy start to it when all the reindeer just fall off the cliff. But mm -hmm. uh, Ramon, I mean, you were the one that said, "Hey, if you haven't watched any of the other True Detective seasons, this is the time to get back on, back in it." And you know, you weren't the only one screaming at me to to watch it. Twi <laughs> watch Twitter it. people on Twitter were also screaming at other people, and that's what got my attention, man. So, man, you you, what did you think about it? Well, I'm glad I'm part of the collective, but no, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, like I, I, you know, I was a fan of season one, kind of season two, didn't watch season three. So when this one came out, like I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. It's not a show that I jump into right away, but I think you hit, you hit it like uh, the, the nail on the head right away is with Jodie Foster being in it. It made me more intrigued because we know she's like a great actor. I just wanted to see her again. And I just, I love shows that I'm not familiar with everything regarding like either the setting or the story and i feel like the whole thing about the, the the multiple days of darkness in alaska it's always been something that's always intrigued me like anything having to do with like that barren landscape and just how people survive just their daily day lives was interesting enough to me for me to begin with but yeah then once i started watching like raul said you had those elements of the supernatural and i was hooked from the beginning because like what show and it was weird too because i couldn't remember if like I know season one had a whole lot of supernatural and actually ties into this one. But at the same time, I forgot like this one really truly made it like mm. in your face. It was almost like, you know, there was a ghost that came back and it shot and get revenge for, you know, this murder and things She's and awake. all this stuff. And, and, and yeah, exactly. And it's like, so the beginning, it just felt so different to me. It, it was talking about the Alaska nights that kind of to me seemed like it was going to make some great like psychological like mental mm -hmm. fuckery going on and mm -hmm. i don't know i just got hooked and then i didn't stop watching i just kind of like finished it i think 
two episodes were the only ones that were remaining. Once I watched those, I was like, holy crap, like, this is so good. Um, because of how they tied it. And, like, you know, I just mentioned, like, we'll discuss it here. I love that it wasn't truly supernatural, but kind of. And I don't know. It was just something really fun to play with. It did so many good things that really messed with your mind. I mean, good. I want to say this one definitely feel a lot more supernatural than the first season. Because I think in the first season, I thought it was more of a, of a cult and not really any supernatural things to it. But that, that means just that I have to go and do a rewatch because it's been so many years. Um, but, you know, this was the first show that I was able to watch with my wife, man. And it's so rare for me to actually be able to sit down and watch the show. I think the fact that they were really good, the fact that there were only six of them, it made it really possible for us to, like, have these moments where we can sit down and enjoy them. And we just wanted to keep going. It kind of, yeah. you know, my wife doesn't know who Jodie Foster is. So it's like, even after I told her that that's Clarissa from Hannibal, like, she still couldn't put a face to her. And I'm like, ah, it's so, like, it makes me so sad that some people... Deep impact. Yeah, I mean, there's other people probably like her that mm -hmm. would watch this person, this great actress, like, and be like, oh, man, she's great. I wish I would see her in more things. Like, yes, you can go back and see her in more things. Um, I think that movie with uh, her and uh, Panic Room is one of my favorite ones. Oh, yeah, Panic Room. Yeah. Yeah. Kristen Stewart. Kristen yeah. Stewart and Jared Leto. Like, good. I really want to go back and watch that. Jared part. Leto's in there? Yeah, I think he's the, one of the robbers. I haven't his, seen it in years. Just, yeah, that's insane. But, but just um, like you guys were saying, like, this movie reminded me about the thing like right away with the whole setting and i mean we live in a part of the country oh, where that's... in the winter you know the sun starts going down by like maybe 3 30 and it feels really depressing man for those like few weeks where like you don't get enough sun so i can only imagine having to live for whatever months without any kind of like sun man it just would drive me insane and i could understand how simple tensions could arise just from like simple things like you know i don't know just you know it's a small community but i can't wait to talk about this because it was a truly great show in my opinion yeah i mean i think the, the way that you said that it started with like the the reindeer the caribou like jumping off was a great thing too just like i mean just i don't know just the way that these shows like set the tone i feel like it's a great way to know if it's even going to be worthy to get into it but setting it in something like that where it's kind of very ambiguous i mean you know the, the guy was hunting and then at the same time there was something so scary or such a force that scared all these caribou like to their death is kind of something that from the beginning you're like, wait, what? <laughs> what am I about to watch? Like, and I don't know. Like, I, I that that was it hooked me from the beginning. And like you mentioned again, the whole thing with the whole barren landscape is always so good. And the thing was another movie that I do remember watching that I was like, that and um, what is the one with uh, was it Ethan Hawke with the vampires? The day yeah, the uh, daybreakers. Jason yeah, what's it? Yeah. No, I think you're thinking of Thirty Days and Night. Where... Yeah, 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 and that one's really good. Thirty Days well, and Night. Thirty Days of Night. Thirty Days of Night. night. Yeah. yeah, possibly. I mean, it's been a while too, but it's just like I don't know. Like I'm just so captivated by just that overall feeling of just being somewhere very remote, um, and especially in this one because then right away you find out that there is like a town rivalry i guess an, an issue with that the whole town has and that's what the mines that you know at this point are polluting and because of the pollution it's causing like all kinds of problems for the townspeople yeah. including like stillbirths and all kinds of stuff which sets a great premise for the actual story um that we're, we'll discuss but eh. yeah yeah and, and i i kind of like the the fact well, one, yes, like it, it definitely it, it set the tone right away with with the, with the the reindeer just jumping off to the death, kind of like for no reason or apparently no reason, but it was it was it was kind of <laughs> eerie, which which was pretty cool. And then um, everything with that one uh, the the, re the research facility because yeah. it, it kind of started off with that too, um, which, which kind of made it a little weird because like, I, I, at first I, I like I didn't even know where it was set, like it could have been. Like uh, anywhere in the Arctic, or it could have been like Antarctica, like in the summer, or, or I don't know. It was just kind of weird um, because you just don't know like when, when or where it is exactly. Like w going into it without knowing anything, and then um, you you have the the research the facility, and then that's kind of when more of the supernatural stuff kind of starts happening, where where like the people are like doing their thing, and then you have the guy recording on his phone. And then behind him is the, that other guy kind of being weird. And then it kind of just goes off the off the rocker yeah. to the delivery guy. I, I mean, 
to me, what I really loved about it is that it's ending, and I'm not going to talk about that anybody landed. Because, you know, in the beginning, you're like, okay, I'm all involved mm-hmm. about this mystery and getting to know the townspeople. And it's always fun to, like, start pointing fingers at who you think it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So then later on at that, and you can be like, yes, I guessed it. So, that, so like, right away, I was really intrigued with that, the whole mystery, trying to investigate the people, find out their backstory. So it's just... um. I don't know, man. It's it's so crazy because even when you get to like maybe the last two episodes, you really aren't sure if the mystery is really gonna like pay off. But it does, man. It freaking does, and I, I I can't wait for like Academy season to like come around in October and for Jodie Foster to start winning all these awards. I think it is gonna she's gonna get a lot of recognition for this show. A lot. Yeah, and you're, and you're right. It did hold on to that mystery because that the only thing I got to rewatch because again mm-hmm. I watched this a few weeks out and like yeah. I just said the only thing I got to rewatch before this episode was the last episode and even in the last episode it's like you don't even find out like the true <laughs> where everything that's going on towards like the second half so yeah, yeah I think like you're you're right because I, I mean I remember watching it and then getting to a sub point and being like oh I love the supernatural I love the mystery but I'm like dude I really kind of hope I'm like I don't remember like again the other true detectives ultimately being a real like supernatural like reason you know it's kind of like how fargo does also the element of sci-fi yeah. or like supernatural as well but then at the end of the day it's not a true thing right it's not something no, that they kind of say the story, oh this yeah. is a you know what's an <laughs> aliens that killed these people which would be cool but that's what we have freaking the thing for you know and other and other shows so yeah i do like how it ended but no i think seeing that mystery of right away dead bodies right the scientists who were like frozen to their deaths like what were your first impressions of that because like right away trying to come up with like what could have possibly done it especially when you do have the one main guy who now we know was the boyfriend of the the one who who got killed in the beginning um and he said like she's back or she's awake yeah um and then all of a sudden you see these guys like frozen kind of in the middle of out there somewhere you know like yeah i i guess when i first saw them i kept thinking i'm like this must have been somebody must have grabbed them like i did actually i did think somebody grabbed them and put them in the snow and purposely like dug a hole and threw them in there like a group like because again i was kind of thinking about season one and maybe potentially being a cult so my head was like right away like oh this was maybe some kind of religious group that did this but you know i didn't know i didn't know what to expect like again to your point even in the last 20 minutes you're even you're not even sure you're gonna find out what happened which would have really upset me but thankfully we do figure it out and it's like oh my god i think i thought it was incredible what what did end up happening to them what about you that that's kind of the 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 thing for me because i I went into this like without seeing anything so like when i was i wasn't expecting any supernatural anything so 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 then like when it started off so like supernaturally um i like the first thing that i thought like oh is there like for real supernatural things and like w- was it a ghost was it like a banshee was it some sort of That's like right. some like folk story type thing uh like a siren or i don't know whatever they could possibly ha- have in in alaska um that that could like freeze people or scare them to death or whatever so th- that 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 was my first impression uh because i didn't know if it was going to go all the way supernatural or 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 like explain that. it away yeah. uh so so i i i i'm kind of glad that i went into it like that though because it it kind of it made it more interesting because like i i am a big fan of supernatural things like i've seen the show supernatural i and 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 i love everything <laughs> folk stories the witcher all that stuff so it's 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 to me it's really cool I mean, to me, my the biggest clue that the reason why I thought I'm like people did this was the fact that their clothes were nicely folded yeah, for yeah. them. That was to me like always the thing that stood out. Like even when the, later on when they're like, "Oh, an avalanche did this," and I'm like, "Well, how did an avalanche fold their clothes all nicely and get them naked?" So it's just kind of <laughs> no. I, 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 yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I thought kind of not similar to you because of like the cult factors in the first season. But it was more so of an idea of, like, I thought drugs, like, always drugs, right? Like, the answer to <laughs> anything crazy, you know, sadly, we do have, like, a real-life case that just happened not so long ago of, like, dudes who passed mm. out outside and they froze to death. Um, and it's just kind of that idea. It was so fresh in my head because of that case that when I started watching this season, I'm like, man, is that what it was? Like, they probably, whatever happened, someone must have injected some drugs or gave him some weird hallucinogens so much that they would have, like, kind of walked wonder off to, like, the middle of nowhere, like, got butt naked and just kind of said, come for me. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but, but you know, then they had that ritual, ritualistic, like, sign on their, like, the one had the ritualistic sign on the forehead. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I think that's what really threw it into, the, like... The, the, uh, the, 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 the Leaf Village sign? Yeah, the Leaf <laughs> Village, yes. This is the Leaf well, Village uh, insignia. <laughs> what that, what that, bro, uh, we're just going to tell you, 
because it's your fault you didn't see season one, but the Spyro is the big connection to like the first season. Nah. Um, and I don't even remember really what the Spyro even had to do with the first season. Don't besides, like, besides like a mythical, maybe <laughs> like a, like they believe in this Spyro thing, like they were worshiping it almost. Because so I don't really the even know. village. The leaf village. <laughs> yeah, there's well, a reason for that. All Naruto lovers know why it's important. So, so, so honestly, at the end of the Konoha. season, I even questioned: Was the spiral really needed? Does it really mean anything? So I really need to know more about the spiral. Well, I think we'll we'll talk about it more when we get towards the parts of later in the cave because I did want to address it, and that was a beautiful scene. Um, mm. but yeah, I mean, Raul, it's not really a spoiler, but in a sense, it, it does. Like the spiral was something that kind of referenced to season one, but anything, I think it just had to do with like the history of these places. That, you know, mm-hmm. that, that there is some kind of, not supernatural, but, like, yeah, oh, some yeah. ritualistic, like, life previously that, you know, before, before these cultures that we all know of, like Jodie Foster said towards the end, like, Alaska's been here way longer before than, than it was even named Alaska, right? And so I really like the lore of just knowing there's something, like, an ancient civilization that we didn't know of that created this, like, symbol and this worship. Then, therefore, like, in season one was part of kind of what played into that story but you know again they don't connect connect role just so you know it's not like anything crazy like that but it's just like a little easter egg yeah. sort of you just, like you just gave me you gave me goosebumps <laughs> <super> <laughs> nice all it's... talking about it i wasn't yeah. ready for that but yeah well, well that's why that cave scene is really important when we'll talk about it later because I, I just really like i just love that, that, that let's, whole let's talk about some other characters that are introduced in the first episode i mean the big the biggest one that's also part a big part of his uh, officer navarro you know, that mm-hmm. was really kind of, like, cool. Like, she's really I like cool. Her. I didn't really thought they had a connection with one of those, another based on the first episode. I'm like, okay, like, like I was trying to understand, it, like, how do they know each other? Like, it really took me a while to really understand that they used to be partners. Yeah. And obviously, you know, that kind of later on in the, I think maybe towards, like, the middle of the episodes, you find out more about that partnership and why it ended. But, yeah, it's just, like, Navarro didn't know what to really think about her. You know, obviously, there was, like, a tie with, the, you know, that case that she was trying to solve herself. Yeah. I mean, that's another beautiful element of the show, too. It's like, do you have the indigenous people to this Alaska area, right? Mm -hmm. And so Agent Navarro, like, plays a huge role because she's someone that's mixed and part of this community. But, you know, for whatever reasons, we know that she left. Uh, or we know the reasons why, but we haven't talked about it yet. But like, she leaves um, a town, and then just because she's so connected to this place, and especially um, when we start finding out more about her mother and then her sister, um, it's ultimately a story about like getting back to your roots, learning who you really are. And I love that that was a huge part of it, right? Because then when you throw that whole, not necessarily supernatural, but when you throw like the native beliefs, I think it sets it to another place. Not saying that all like natives like beliefs and stories are supernatural or not real but we know that sometimes they are kind of chilling right because we hear these things of certain stories throughout like the americas and there's always like some weird of like some some sense of like this is supernatural or star people that came to earth and all this stuff but then ultimately all these cultures have their like like beginnings in that and i think this this hit it right away because she was struggling through that right from the beginning and i really liked her as a character um and then, I don't know, yeah, her relationship with Jodie Foster was kind of very strange in the beginning because of that reason. Like yeah. you said, you didn't know what to think that they had in common or why they didn't like each other or both <laughs> yeah. being very strong, like, female characters. You could tell that they were ready to punch each other. Like, like why are you even fucking here? And then, like, kind of holding their fist at each other every time they see each other. Uh, this made for a good, interesting, another mystery. Yeah. No, with Navarro, I wish we would have gotten more of her scenes when she fought in um in one of the wars that she was overseas somewhere. Oh yeah, but, you know, like you get that in the first episode where I think one of her um like fellow uh, members like gets I don't know. I, I remember I think I remember like her being just, like like almost like her half her face was messed up or potentially dead. I I don't know, but it was like she was talking to her. Uh, you forgot already, then, Rebel. You forgot already, Rebel. But yeah, like in the beginning, so I thought you know we we're gonna get more of that explanation as to like, oh, this may be the reason why she's so connected and able to see all these things. Not just the fact that she's a uh, Native American, but also because she's had these experiences in her life with her first with her mom, next with again her all being overseas and you know seeing that like, again. You try to explain that scene better so that Rebel kind of has an understanding of it. So, so because I, I obviously I'm kind of failing on it. Yeah. Well, no, I mean obviously. So like we know that Agent Navarro has like other things that have to do with her family, right? But there was a one scene that she had a flashback of her being like in somewhere in the Middle East or somewhere off like in a war. 
And then well, one she, of her, she had, she had like several of those flashbacks. Yeah, but they're all in the desert. Yeah, but they're all the same situation. Where in the beginning they show that one of her like mates, one of her fellow soldiers, oh, got either mm-hmm. shot like on the head with like a big caliber weapon because she just has mm-hmm. like a big old hole missing, or either a mine or something fractured on the side of her. And then there's this very beautiful and chilling scene that the soldier is still like sitting there kneeling with like half her face missing and she's yeah. whispering to Navarro and it wasn't until Navarro gets really close that she basically tells her like, there's, I, what, I don't even remember what she said. I don't remember. But yeah. Basically like, you know, like come here or go there. But it was something yeah. about like having faith and continuing on the path of discovery. And, and that's why there is a flashback all throughout because she sees that as a sign as to why she had to come back home and really reconnect with like her roots and kind of the the I guess psychological trauma that her mother and her sister share with her because we later find out that's really intense and it has to do a little bit with kind of like not you know mental and psychological problems but clearly that's still meant to believe that there's also supernatural with uh like this is my predisposed like diagnosis of my freaking broken Bro, head you have one job bro and that's for you know anytime, the there's, a be- anytime there's a veteran soldier scene for you to like come in and tell us <laughs> we could be talking about ptsd or something <laughs> right now but i mean it clearly that's what it was it was yeah, meant to be was, like yeah. some sort of like her not being able to like but it but it was almost like a comforting like scene because yeah even though mm-hmm. her like fellow soldier had her most of her face missing it was very reassuring that she would find comfort in something in the future and again, mm-hmm. she uses that as her kind of like, oh, this is what I'm following these signs that I got. And he like, and she kind of like alludes it to like God, but it's kind of the idea of like, they told me to have faith or continue or to believe. Um, I wish I could remember the actual thing. And I don't know, yeah. does that happen when she's driving and then the bear? Is that when we get our first like appearance of the bear? Cause she crashes to the side. Cause I think something comes up. And then she also finds that, that um, I don't know if it was a bracelet or um, one of like the thing that her mom would wear, and then the, she like the, throws the, the, the necklace, the necklace the, 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 with the cross, yeah. with the cross, and she throws it, and then later on we see it again. So again, all these like supernatural things that are happening. Did she throw throughout. it or, or did she drop it? Oh, she gets rid of it right away. I think she opens the car and she just like gets rid of it, and then later yeah, on, it, I, I, yeah, we see uh, it again. I remember if she. Cause I, I I thought that she dropped it. I don't remember if yeah, she. Threw I don't it know if that I, was Officer Navarro or was it, you know, Jodie Foster's character. Yeah, Jodie Foster is the one that takes off her necklace in the last episode. Um, after she has like the little incident where she falls into the water. Yeah. Um, she comes out of that and she just kind of like becomes a believer, and then she takes the necklace off. Cause like, I mean, that's another thing this show has to do is really testing your beliefs, right? Yeah. You have mm-hmm. someone, and and again. It, it, Failure to our intro, kind of being more goofy and talking about Jodie Foster that way. But I mean, this true. This this show is very much about like women, not necessarily women empowerment, but it's like the strength of these female characters because both Jodie Foster's character and Navarro's character are dealing with like a lot of trauma, a lot of like things that happen to them that we don't know about right away. So we're seeing these beautiful like like you know flashbacks and these little mementos of like the polar bear with the one eye right yeah. of the soldier with the half a missing face and both of them are having these like conflicts like inner conflicts that later kind of you see what tragic thing happened to them and um they kind of not even overcoming it but just kind of learn learning how to deal with it more so i mean that's another aspect of it that i'm like it's so good yeah I mean, with Jodie Foster's character, like, I mean, you know, she has that daughter and you know that some kind of tragedy happened, especially because like her daughter looks nothing like her. So, you know, it's clearly later on, you know, re- like you right away, you find out that that's just like her half or her, her adopted, yeah, her stepdaughter. Um, but yeah, like I was kind of like, I wanted to know what did happen. I mean, it's one of those things where even then when you do get a an answer, you still kind of have to picture in your head what really happened, like a car accident and then, you know, her husband and you know little boy must have both perished in the accident that's what it seemed like yeah, yeah. so i mean they keep it kind of a good mystery like i said just even rewatching the last episode they gave you a little bit more they show like the crash and then they show her kind of like breaking apart like falling apart once she finds out that her son is dead um and obviously not even speaking to her like revelation and everything going on in her head but yeah like you see more of it but it's never the most like you never see like who hit him because it wasn't important you don't see anything else about any of that situation you just see finally more that the son did die because of a car crash but it's just like i love that the show kind of waited till the very very end to give you that because they kind of like want you to just live with that conflict yourself too and be like 
why is Jodie Foster so broken? Like, why can't she be a better stepmom? Like, why isn't her husband there? Like, all these things that make her, like, such a, like, lovable bitch, you know? Like, I mean, yeah, not, oh, yeah. I'm not calling her that because that's that's the, that's the persona that she is playing. She is, like, the tough-ass bitch that she's all cranky and she just doesn't want to deal with half the shit in that town. Um, not because she doesn't care, it's just because... Well, it's crazy because it seems like I, she's sleeping with everybody's husband in that, in that town. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I'll, I'll definitely n- disagree about the lovable part because, like, I I really disliked her character for most of the show. I think she was I, a good I, detective, I, though. No, no, yeah, yes, 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 definitely. But like, I thought she was like a, a bad person. Um, but like the character, which which was weird for a Jodie Foster character because Jodie Foster's never like unlikable. No, yeah, exactly. So I think so, that's so, so, so compelling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so so I thought it was good, and 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 it it just I it bugged me, and like I didn't understand why she was so against her daughter, kind of like doing anything, like cultural with with like the like the the the. The thing on the chin, like the the lines, the tattoo, the, um, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 like different things like that. Like I understand her not wanting her to like go protest in front of the factory or whatever and stuff like that. But like the doing anything cultural, her opposition to that kind of seemed kind of weird and extreme, and and I didn't really understand why. Besides possibly her being like slightly racist. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of it, it's funny because it does make you think that and you don't want to believe it. Like, I remember I having those same reservations, and I meant Lovell in the sense because I think at that by the end of the season, you have to really appreciate her like determination, especially with the relationship with Navarro, and like she's not giving mm-hmm. up on her, and also just the fact that she wasn't giving up on the murder case of that one uh woman in the beginning, right? I forget her name, and I should remember it before we continue talking yeah. about it. But um no, like I, I yeah, I agree remember watching that and being like, why is she so like anti her stepdaughter? Or she was just so controlling over the stepdaughter. Not like terrible, but like you could tell that she wasn't letting her do a lot of things. And I don't necessarily think that it was like I thought it was racism, but I was like, man, crazy ass white bitch. Like what the hell is your problem? And then it just kind of made you like feel like there was like a cultural disconnect that I feel like was really good for us because again like what it sounds from all of us is that the the show really made you like it had a lot of mysteries throughout that you were still trying to like really understand. And it wasn't really towards the end that you're like understanding everybody's relationships, everything that happened. And I don't know, genius for the show to really make you flip your opinions about these people throughout. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Cause you know, like in the last couple of years, I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, shows uh, kind of depicting the native American lifestyle and how much really, they go through even today, like how much stuff they're going through and how like, you know, a lot of their women go missing and, you know, they, they never really are found or, you know, there's not a lot of efforts being done to like find those missing people. So I think maybe it's one of those things where I sort of felt that she was protecting her against her culture because she didn't want her to one day just go missing and then she would become another Native American that nobody really cares about besides her. Uh, yeah. And it's just kind of like kind of sometimes like the sad reality we live in, you know, like not everybody gets the national attention when you go missing. And sometimes that kind of stuff does help, man. If you, you know, if you you look young and pretty and, you know, people think like, oh, my God, like this is a good face to plaster all over the news. Like they will find you or they'll find something about your case. But, you know, some of them just go cold. And I just felt like, again, she was this caring mother that, like you said, she was trying to protect her in the wrong ways by not saying like, hey, you can't be part of your own culture. But she also when we get introduced to her, I mean, we get introduced to her in the worst possible way where it's just like you have another mom arguing with her about like how her and her daughter are doing naughty things and recording them. And I, obviously that's not a very good way of introducing this, this young girl. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, maybe I, it is. What's well, <laughs> not because then you'd really do kind of become on Jodie Foster's side about like, Oh, she can't protect herself and yeah. you do have to like put her on lockdown. And I mean, and kind of to mention a big key plot of the show so that we kind of catch ourselves up, it's it's the whole idea that, you know, at this point we find now that the the reason why they're so devoted to this case is because there was the murder of this, like, woman, like, in in, like three years in the past or something like that. And, you know, obviously we we kind of get this bridge 
to the case with the scientists, the frozen scientists, because of this like severed tongue that we later find out that it, oh, it yeah. does belong to a native woman that does ties it to why Navarro is so invested in this because she was so invested in this case that had to do with like another fellow native member, but also at the same time, it was the mystery of this woman that got murdered. Right. And then again, the, the plot, point that connects all this is and why Jodie Foster's soul were protective is because you have this mind that is clearly like causing so much pollution right and we know that this kind of has created this distress in the town because you have like most of the native population as well as some of the other like community population against the mines because they're polluting the water they're polluting the earth um they're causing all these like defects and and word illnesses within the people and then kind of like stillborn still births with some of the pregnant women but then at the same time, this mine is like the one big job source yep. in, in this town. Yep. And so it's like, there's this like conflict of like, you know, is it good or is bad? But what Jodie Foster knows is that because there was that murder in the past and they never truly connected it to the mine, but they kind of all suspected it. She's over, like, she's clearly being overprotective of the stepdaughter because she knows if she hangs out with the people that are like the, the what is it called? The, oh my God, the the activists that are anti-mine then she's endangering her life even more because clearly they're they're more connected than we know but i've seen plenty of movies and shows where like the corporate ceo is like we have to get rid of this person or we have to do this to like the you whole know, town to save the company or you know save our stock and i don't know man i don't know if like there's truly people in this world that's like no you know i have to go to this lane to make sure that the the, the factory stays running but yeah it kind of it, it sucks man because imagine like i don't work for mcdonald's but if i knew mcdonald's was kind of causing obesity and um you know maybe the food's poisoning you know some of the people and we don't really it is talk yeah. about it because you know it's just something that we don't talk about it because we all really do appreciate mcdonald's being in every corner but it's just like man how do you continue to work for a company like that but at the end of the day you know when they're paying you and your check is nice and they're giving you benefits and all this stuff it's a little bit easier to just look the other way and it kind of sucks man because i do wish that we could all just say like no we're we're putting a stop to this but it's just like i don't know how that unless aliens attack i really don't know how a corporate greed is ever going to go away honestly <laughs> no but but i think that's why it's more significant in this small town because you think that it would be to such a level but yeah when you have a company that's providing the majority of the work and the money to this town it's even harder to say like hey i'm going to be against this because clearly you see where that ends you like it did get someone killed um and i don't think i mean and it wasn't even like directly related but it was kind of <laughs> but just even the fact that at least they use the mine as a resource to kind of move the body and do things with it you know that the mine was totally okay with anything that would happen yeah. in order to protect their profits so but it, i'm laughing a little inside <laughs> because um you know, I always hear about like, how people people go to Alaska because there's jobs and they're gonna pay you good. So people like they don't even know nothing about living in Alaska, but they take the the, the they they do the deep uh, leap of faith and they're like, all right, I'm gonna move to Alaska and hopefully the job does pay well and all this stuff. But I keep reminding myself of uh, Malcolm in the Middle, where Francis, <laughs> which is like their no, older no, kid, no. <laughs> goes to Alaska for uh, you know these jobs, <laughs> and at the end of the day, he's like living in like worse poverty than he could ever live living back in the you know wherever he, they're from. Uh, that big lady. Like, <laughs> and it makes me feel like that like i wonder at the end of the day if it's really worth it you know even if like you go to alaska and they're paying you like 45 50 dollars an hour a uh, job is it really worth it to be doing that for even a year like i don't know part of me just unless i you lived it i don't really know if i could say yes or no to that yeah to be so isolated i don't know yeah Especially, again, once they talk about those, like, days of darkness, I don't know how I would survive that. I mean, that's the whole thing with that that's so alluring to me is the fact that you have this moment where it's this repetitive darkness, and already the mind gets so freaking crazy at night, if you know what I mean in general. Like, I think that's when we all just kind of yeah. get a little loopy. But can you imagine so much repeated, like, darkness and the same? Because, like, that's something that you know is happening in the show, right? Because they allude to that, oh, like, the, the days of darkness, right? And they kind of, like number two day of like full night time but then at the end of the day like you almost forget that as you're watching the six episodes but then you're like holy crap yeah that's right it's been completely <laughs> pitch dark the whole time well, um i don't know well, just... every time they keep doing the calendar i'm like oh it's almost christmas oh it's almost new year so i just always kind of like was kind of associating that was kind of making me feel 
not as bad for them because I'm like, technically, this is kind of like a happy time, you know, like maybe once it's past like Christmas and uh, the 31st of the year, the New Year's Eve, maybe it gets more depressing. But I got to imagine the first week, it's not, it's not that bad. It can't be this bad. <laughs> well, shit no. hit the fan during those holidays. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then if you also think of it like the opposite, too. Be, like uh, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen uh, like uh, Insomnia or Insomniac with uh, Al Pacino. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. 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 Because yeah, yeah, I I think that's the kind of the opposite premise where it's like it's always day because oh, the, the yeah. same way how how it's night for like oh, continuous God. days. It's 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 day for continuous days well, during the, the summer too. Isn't that the thing with Iceland? If you travel, it's like at certain times of the year, like you almost get like daylight the whole like day for most of the, like there's no nighttime right that's what it yeah, what you happens. have like long days and long nights yeah. and i don't know like yeah the where we're in the year they fall but yeah yeah you're, you're, you're the one well, that in the summer planned. it's long days or on the the summer solstice and then on the winter solstice it's it's uh a, a lot of night yeah i don't know how any of these people and, I, and that's the whole thing i kept thinking of as i was watching this whole season i'm like i don't know how, why any of these people live here i don't understand how they're surviving i don't understand why they don't just like get out of there i don't know what's stopping them I don't care if it's like your so and so gave you this land and you're pretty much not paying anything for it. It's like I don't know, man. It just seemed terrible. Like you know, we come from uh, parents that you know they dream about going back to the old country, but I can say at least in the old country where we come from, like it's nice sunshine. and warm, <laughs> sunshine. It's not freaking winter. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like people also say, say the same thing about us here, like in the Chicago land area of like We're crazy yeah, like how how can we live here how can we get the winters that we get or whatever like why don't we move to texas florida or georgia oh, or i don't know if you were here California. yesterday but it was snowing all day it's, on it's april no today it's not <laughs> yes. today april 4th yes. it's <laughs> fucking snowing it's like what the fuck uh, i don't know exactly. it, it's funny that you even mentioned like mexico right because like I, I i mean i grew up in mexico for a few years and i remember like and this is like before we had a lot of like electricity, like in the town, like I think actually very little or no electricity in the town because we still had like candlelight. So I remember like my town's divided by like this big valley and you can literally cross it. There's nothing but mountains around it. But this whole idea of like pitch darkness when it's like even even the moon is not out or like the, the, the like stars are kind of being covered because it's a cloudy night. I always hated that feeling. I just remember it used to terrify me to be standing even in the patio, like staring out into like the staring out into the vast like openness <laughs> like it, it's beyond like terrifying to know that you have so much space so much like like of an area that you just really don't know what's where what's what if you hear noises and i mean i remember running across that like valley multiple times like when it just get too dark at one point and it's not even too late but at a certain point in the dark and just being like terrified to run into a freaking cow or a pig or something like that because <laughs> again in the middle of the darkness without a flashlight Anything that just comes up in front of you, you're like, what the fuck? Like, ah, and I don't know. I think that's probably why I was such a scaredy cat growing up because it was just that fear of the dark, man. So th in this show, I just kept on thinking, like, how many of these scenes would have been in the daytime? Like, most of them, like, because, you know, that's when they do their job is during the daytime. When are people asleep? During the daytime. So it was just so, it just threw you off so bad that yeah. it was nighttime the whole time. It's crazy. Dude, dude uh, one character that I want to talk about, which is probably my favorite character in the whole, oh. um, you know, show, is, is Peter, which is kind of funny because he also ties to like <laughs> the worst character in the show. But but Peter, man, I kind of I felt bad for him because he was getting a lot of crap at home, and I think his boss was taking a little bit of advantage of him. Oh yeah, you know, but a I little also, bit, a lot of it, <laughs> a lot of it. But he was learning so much from her, man. Every time that I saw their scenes, I'm like, whoa. In a way, this counts as like experience, and this is going to help him. Right in... question. Yeah, this is going to help him in the long run. So I could see his obsession with like, I do want to spend most of my time with this lady, and I do want to learn from her, and I do want to. Anytime she orders me something, like I do want to do it for her because it's probably going to lead to like a great career path. And also, mm -hmm. um, you know, he's learning so much. I mean, we know he wasn't sleeping with her, even though he probably could have, just based on <laughs> um, what I saw from Jody's Foster's character in the show. And Carlos has got some uh, fascination for Jody now. No, but uh, <laughs> I, I um, when earlier when you guys were saying that Jody Foster's character and maybe Navarro were like good detectives, I actually feel like they kind of slacked a lot. If anyone, Peter was the one who did all the work. Like if you really think about it, like Jody well, Foster did all the character, grunt work. He did all the grunt work, yeah. but in reality, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. Like Jody Foster did the whole like Jota like question your like questions and, and kind of like the methodology methodology of like 
do your own research kind of thing, right? Like she kept on just pushing him and pushing him. But in reality, that man was the one who was like putting in the work, like really like not only physically doing all these like tasks, but yeah, he would leave, come back with like, I found information. I have information. And he was yeah. just like, I have a notepad of like stuff. And I remember watching it at one point. And I'm like, man, that guy deserves a race like right now. Like, I hacked cool. the phone. Yeah, I hacked the phone. <laughs> I hacked the phone, yeah. Well, it's one of those things like where your parents just feel like you can look up anything and find all sorts of information. So they're almost like the Jodie Foster character. Like, hey, I need you to do this and come back to me with everything you, you, you can find on the internet. I don't care that it's Christmas. Joe, break this phone <laughs> for me, damn it. It's well, Apple, one, right? Apple phones yeah. don't do that. I don't care. Do it. <laughs> Didn't he like face recognition one of them just by going up to like the dead body? It's like I'm yeah. gonna do that. <laughs> uh, but it was the one guy that they couldn't find. That's the phone that she he she needed him to like break. Yeah, yeah. The Android phone, probably an Android for sure. It was an Android. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The only but reason was... why they were able to crack it, or why else? Yeah. Yeah. He was good. Other other bits of the mystery that always kind of had me fascinated too was the whole twist and shout. Like the whole Ferris Bueller stay out like scene playing over and over in that song was something that I was really, really like invested in finding out why one, Jodie Foster fucking hated that song. And two, why it kept on turning back on and it would keep playing and playing and playing. Um, and then we later found out that it did connect to her one of her previous cases, but then also wasn't it maybe also with her son too? Like I know it definitely had to do with her previous case where they they walked into the guy who had abused the uh, mother and child and then Navarro ended up shooting him. Yeah, uh, which that was another big kind of little bit of the story that they clearly had a secret together. And later you find out that you know Navarro shot a a, a person that should have gone into custody, eventually get arrested and have a fair trial, and he didn't. And Jodie Foster helped cover it up. So, uh, but yeah. That, I don't, I don't, I... I think it was Jodie Foster that they, they shot him. No, no was, because because Navarro. Navarro said that that she was about to shoot him. It was no, all the way Navarro. around. Navarro. Oh, it was really? all the way around. Yeah, it was all the way around. Okay. Navarro shot him, and then Jodie Foster told her, "I was about to do it," and she's like, "What? Kill this guy?" Because she had just came back and acted like she had killed the the one mm -hmm. last scientist, and she was like, "No, kill the first guy." But then they show the they show the flashback of. Navarro just like do it and yeah, 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 Jodie yeah, Foster yeah, yeah. was walking in there already with her hand like cocked and ready to mm -hmm. go and you know Navarro just beat her to it but you that's know, another thing about the women empowerment yeah. because she's they're clearly just in the mindset of like who's the victim and who are they trying to protect you, you, you know Peter kind of solves that case by finding out that that guy that they shot was left-handed and he's like he was able to put it together but dude, I, I like how did he know he was left handed? Like, like I feel like you guys don't. You guys know me, and you guys don't even know what hand I write with. Like, I don't understand how like this yeah, I cop do. can just get the hell out of here <laughs> with that one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those things. Like, how do you find out? Like, you know, what somebody besides the other like on a spot, like your spouse or somebody that really knows you, like saying like, oh yeah, he was left handed. Like, it's one of those things. Like, I find it really hard to believe that he was able to put that together. I feel like there might have been a detail that maybe I forgot about explaining. Maybe in the that, report, but... maybe maybe when yeah. you shot, they gotta find everything out about you, and it's like, is he right or left handed? And somebody checked left handed. <laughs> yeah, that might have been a detail that now I'm just not thinking of, but I'm sure they thought about it because it seemed pretty well thought. But yeah, you're right. Like, it's no, just no, like oh, no, yeah, yeah, you're left yeah, yeah, because uh, because he also said that like other pictures that there were w were flipped. So oh, he meant that he was holding the right. phone like this yeah. rather than this. No, 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 because like, well, the the pictures are like afterwards, obviously, uh, that they flipped them to try to like cover up the the fact oh, that. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you were trying to solve the left-handed mystery for me. I'm like, okay, keep going. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 like, not like all the pictures, uh, like in, uh, in that were part of the case that they were but, flipped but to make it to make it. Was he left. was able to realize that when he found out that he was left-handed, yeah. because then I think he was able to kind of like put together. Oh yeah, because he had a he also had like a face mole or mark, something. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a mark. Yeah, yeah, that was the big thing. Okay, there, there he goes. goes. And something else that in case, you know, again, people listening, but at this point, we already kind of know, too, that the dad, like Peter's dad, is the one that has been manipulating a lot of the, the evidence <laughs> that he was the one that moved the body of that first, like, victim. Um, it didn't it, kill her. It didn't kill her, but the fact that he went in, in representation up, yeah. of the mind to cover it up, but yeah. then he went the extra mile, and then he, like, cut up her, no, he didn't cut up her body. What did he do? He didn't do he didn't, anything. He just he dropped her. Yeah. Oh no, he was. It was a tongue, but that wasn't her. That's another no, mystery that the show never told us who did that. No, we don't know who who like did it and who put it under the the table. 
Yeah. Yeah. What, what's it called? Well, with him, my favorite line, I think, in the whole show <laughs> is when uh, J- Jody uh, Danvers is like, how many times do I got to tell you your dad only looked like he acts stupid, but he's like, I don't know what it was like. He acts stupid, but he isn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, dude, that to me is pretty funny because I feel like people could say that about me. Like, oh, yeah, how many times do I got to tell you, like, Carlos <laughs> acts stupid, but he really isn't. And this is like, I don't know, man. I feel like there's a lot of people like that. Are you? underestimate them because maybe you see them and you're like they're not really clever enough to pull this but it's just like danvers knew that her dad at the end of the day was like a really clever and guy that you know if maybe he had the right motivation he could have be so much more in life but he obviously was sort of a fool because obviously he fell for that whole uh bride that never came <laughs> the, oh, the male order yeah. bride yeah. God. <laughs> now, you know what i don't care how bad of a guy he was like i like i like this character and i think that's right that's one of the the the, the points in the show that's supposed to like humanize him more right Mm -hmm. because you know he's not the best dad i wouldn't say he's like super shitty but you kind of know that he's a little shitty right and then as you find out more you know that he is kind of like not the best dad but like he wants to be there and then he has this grandchild that he does care about because there's the scenes later on when you know like uh, peter does go to see him and he is trying to steal like the evidence or the the file case Mm -hmm. but at the same time like there is just that relationship of like that there's this feel of like longing where the dad does want the relationship with the son to be better. And the son is just kind of stuck in this situation too, but because he's following Danvers so much, like he, I don't know, it's just like such a weird dynamic, but yes, then you, you know, the, the whole idea of like the dad being still human, you have this thing about the Russian order bride that I felt so <laughs> bad for. Cause I'm like, how did you not know that you were being conned the whole time? But he was just so naive about it it's just kind of sad and that's probably where all the i don't wish that on anybody he, sorry by the way i'm like Mm-mm. and that's where all the money that he got to hide the body went yeah. to went to this like this imaginary woman that never came um uh, never came <laughs> yeah, and, yeah and it also kind of sorry it also kind of made me understand <laughs> why he was so protective over that box of evidence you know because in the beginning i couldn't understand i'm like mm-hmm. dude like okay so you you have a box in your house why are you being so like an asshole about it and mm-hmm. then later on, you obviously understand the reason why. Because, I mean, if anything, you, know, you, you should have, like, burnt it. Yeah, <laughs> like, don't keep it. No, well, it, I mean, and, and, and I, I think it's kind of iron- uh, 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 ironic how he spent, like, all this money sending uh, money to, to his R- Russian bride uh, for, for medicine um, w- when uh, it was money that, that he got paid for doing all these bad deeds. <laughs> Whereas he's kind of like he's getting conned for uh, in return for for kind of like as a karma g- getting back at uh, back back at Ro, him. Bro, well, I feel like it. if like if I shave and did like the women filter that changes your gender, I could trick you into sending me money because <laughs> you know you you might think like oh why didn't he just talk to her through uh you know the phone FaceTime? But I feel like I could trick you with the right filter and then you'd be sending me all your money and I never go to your well, house. You could. All. <laughs> i'm the one with the wig okay yeah that'd be kind of weird if you saw me and i don't know if you're into bald women but <laughs> I'm, I'm down for this challenge let's see who gets more money from raul let's go you know another thing about the yeah, filter even ask my wife for you name out your fucking mouth oh. <laughs> bam anytime i do that filter i do it look so much like my younger sister which is so freaking funny because <laughs> yeah, i showed her funny. husband i did too like, <laughs> I, I I I look just like Daphne. That's that's funny. <laughs> Poor Daphne. <laughs> I know. Lucky uh, you, Raul. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> lucky me. I mean, you what, I look like Jackie. I I mean, I guess I do more than my brother would, but I I don't. I'm not like you guys. I don't play around with that filter day and night. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me <Yes>. questioning. <laughs> Carlos puts on a dress from his wife's closet, and then he's like, "How would I look?" <laughs> I can't uh, say I've done it. I think, it, and any time that I mess with those, filters, dress. <laughs> <laughs> any time that I mess with those filters, just the fact that I don't have hair distorts everything because it's not like they add hair. They add your, hair. Do they it's, see it's clearly? Hair, yeah. Clearly, I am not investing time into playing with these filters to <laughs> make me look like a woman. Maybe but. you should. You, you would have pictures with with hair on. I mean, I don't know if that's the same. <laughs> it's like, nope, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, my God. Let's keep going because now my, my brain's going towards all kinds of different scenarios with Ramon and Wicks. <laughs> no. I, I, at this point, I'm just waiting for people uh, to 
to be watching this and then like with their phone putting the the camera on the on the video to to see what we look like <laughs> as okay. girls. Yeah, I'll help you. <laughs> oh my god, stop it! No, okay. <laughs> well, well, no, I mean, it's... guys. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so yeah with any case murder right like now that that we're getting towards i guess could jump towards the end a little bit more Mm -hmm. well no no, i mean i guess since we're talking about peter and his dad i love the fact that he freaking shot his dad i did not expect that did not expect that whatsoever yeah no no i just i i forgot that so my i kind of missed this by a little but like i missed the scene where he rescued his son from the ice or he told him the story about how he like saved his life um, you know, when he was a little kid, he was like skating five oh, years yeah. old under yeah. the ice and stuff like that. And I think to me that added even more like this idea of like, man, like not only did this man birth you, but he also sort of in a certain moment in your life saved your life. And then like, it's one of those weird things. Like now your son, 15 years later, is like shooting you and killing you. It's like, I don't know, man, it like fucks with you so <laughs> in so many different levels. <laughs> that was the conversation we're having. I forgot what this whole cross-dressing and wigs that we were talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I'm like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was, I, I think I was going in that idea of like, that I love that the show kind of made you like really humanize like the dad, right? And you know that clearly at the end of the day, no matter what your your situation is, some people do become desperate enough to do these like terrible things, right? And and even though maybe hiding a body or moving a body is not the worst of the worst, like you're still accomplice to like murder and all these things and part of this corporate greed and, and you're a town's person, you know, so you think you should be loyal to those people. And clearly he didn't give a fuck about that, but kind of, again, he got what he deserved with his Russian wife. I wouldn't even say the murder. I think the Russian wife was like what he deserved. <laughs> uh, I think when his son killed him, like, yeah, like by this point we had seen that beautiful story and, and it was like connecting that. And I think it was making you feel like that whole relationship. And I think at this point you were like, man, even if I find out that this guy is corrupt and this guy did actually play a lot into Annie Kay's murder and he did have something else to do, or we know that he is a corrupt cop, that clearly this is a part of him that made him do it. Whether he loved his son so much that he just felt really obligated to like, you know, do the most he could. But again, his son was kind of older anyway, so that wasn't really adding up. Yeah. Um, and I think that story was definitely meant to make you feel like you said, it's like give a person who you now are like, oh, this guy's a dick and he's an asshole. But then you're like, oh, man, he did love his son and he risked his life for his son. And his son and does not me. Yeah, and he's lonely now and his son does have something to be thankful for having him and saving him. But yes, like I, I think... I think if anything that shows that Peter was just like that, the best person in this episode or the show, because he had the best growth. He had like the most like insight, like he was just doing the most. And then he's confronted with this decision that was so split that I didn't even expect it. Like I thought that Jodie Foster was going to be the one that was going to shoot him. Like Danvers was just going to like yeah. mm-hmm. stop him. Or maybe she was going to hesitate. Like she had been hesitating and just kind of maybe he, the the cop was going to shoot the, the other scientists. And to see that Peter had like, you know, kind of shot his own dad was such a big surprise to me but i just remember everything for me just kind of like stopped and i'm like dude, crap dude, dude my dog was next to me and like i'm like no like i grabbed my like, dog and i like i hide i'm like no like like i feel bad for the kid man because he's just like he's been going through so much like crap you know he was there was a reason why he was out. in amber's house like the fact that he got kicked out he was living in her like shag shag what is it uh, shag, shag? yeah back in the back and it's just like at the end of the day once the show wraps up like he's the one that has to continue with the memory that he did this he threw his dad in the ocean and it's just like i know we're not gonna get it but in 15 years i could totally see like somebody's like murdering people and it's this damn kid and it all goes back to like jody's foster it's kind of like it's she's responsible for creating him oh, in a God, way no yeah it's <laughs> no. like i don't know dude. No. This fucking sucks. that's why he's getting away with it no, yeah. don't per- don't pervert that idea because like I see it, I see it so well. But I think I think it's enough, man. What we got with him, like he still he wanted to be responsible. He wanted to dispose of the bodies himself. I love the scene where he has the the woman, I forget her name too, which she plays a big key role mm-hmm. into the story too. But it's like you know, yeah, how, Rose. Are you talking yeah, about Rose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rose, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I think that she's potentially the mother of like Matthew McConaughey per things oh. that I've seen. But anyways, that's a whole different story. Not not really probably a thing that they yeah. would ever like connect, but. Something about he the dad having mystery leukemia. To her. Yeah, she did yeah. have a lot of mystery to her. Well, yeah. it's it something about that her husband had leukemia, and that's why he kind of went off and kind of wandered off into the wilderness, right? And like kind of like died in the way that he died. But mm-hmm. Matthew McConaughey's also had leukemia or something like that, and he disappeared and he kind of went off. So, anyways, long story short, 
But anyways, like that that whole fact that when she went to help him dispose of the bod- bodies, like even when she was trying to, to deflate the lungs, right? Like he, he just wanted to be mm-hmm. a part of it. He ultimately ended up dumping the bodies. And I think to me, that's kind of like the harder part of like what he did um, is the fact that he's taking responsibility doing that so that later he's not sitting there with this idea that prof- like you know it's going to fester regardless, right? It's going to turn dark. But I think... The fact that she even mentioned, like, the hard part only begins now, right? Like, I, I love that because yeah, it's true. Yeah. But, I, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't pervert the idea for myself to be like, oh, my God, he's going to turn into a serial killer because he did this to his dad. If anything, the will to be a father and to be a good husband to his wife yes. and son, I think that's what's going to save him ultimately. Because at the end of the day, that was, I mean, I love that whole relationship with them, um, especially since it seems like they're struggling, even though he's, like, a cop and... You know, I don't know. That's, that whole relationship is also really nice, but no need to go into it. It's not crazy. I mean, so, I mean, no, I agree, man. I think you you, you really said it well. I mean, I guess we should kind of go into, like, the whole mystery, you know, finally being resolved. Then. I know I'm sure we're missing little things in the middle. Cause well, yeah. I, yeah, because, I mean, this, this it was, like, every episode, was, if not an hour, like, an hour and 15, man, they went so, they were so good, all of them. So it's, like, impossible to get through it, like. Unless we were doing like an episode by episode breakdown, it's just so impossible to talk about everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. So upon that, like, do, they, do I like that idea when we discovered the secret lab, right? Because when we discovered, and we knew, we were alluding to this because they were like, oh, like the murder got done in this lab. We had the video of Annie K in like a weird cave. And you saw like the, what's it, the spiral or the fossil? Yeah, yeah the fossil. Yeah. And there was such a mystery to that too that I was really liked it when Navarro and, and uh, Danvers fell upon this like cave because the most shilling part was seeing all those like prehistoric or those ancient animals swirling around in that like spiral form, because that gave me the most chills of <laughs> like any point of this episode, because here's the super nat- natural part that we were like talking about, like that's been ongoing that at this point, I still kind of felt like the, the show was going to have a real life, like solution and, and answer. But this to me was like, you can't fake this. Like, I mean, yeah, in the show you can, right? It's fiction. Like someone created it and wrote it. But it's like, you can't fake this. Like they fell in the cave and you have this stuff that's been there for years and years and years. Um, like and damn just the fact that, Yeah. And then, they, <laughs> and then they were showing these like, these patterns that they were kind of moving. And as they got frozen to death, and it's just such a beautiful like mm-hmm. metaphor for like the, the beauty, like beauty in nature. But then, you know, there's some weird dark force or ritualistic thing going on and anyway so they found the freaking hidden lab and dude as soon as they went into that hidden lab and they kind of like were going up i right away i was like they're gonna be in you know exactly where they started and like i just knew oh, it and sure enough so good <laughs> that, <laughs> that was, was so good. fucking crazy yeah yeah because the whole time you're like when, when they saw the when the 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 delivery guy saw the the guy running across in the lab i didn't know where the guy went you know clearly they're in the bare mm-hmm. open there's nothing around and i was kind of wondering like how things got in and out and i, I don't know that was just such a good answer to that but yeah, yeah. i mean you then do you find out the actual thing that happened right it was essentially yeah. that the, the scientists had discovered that there was like an organism that was going to help them basically solve a lot of humanity's like problems because it was yeah. going to be like a cure all. Yeah. And because they really wanted to get to it, what was the easiest way to get to it is pollution. The pollution, yeah. yeah. A slow so, thaw <laughs> of, the, of the permafrost. So then, therefore, yeah. they were like lying for the mines so the mines could keep polluting more and more and more. And it was just like the most. And, evil- and, and ask them to pollute extra. And pollutes extra, yeah. yeah. So it was like it was like the most evil plot for trying to save humanity, right? Because it's mm-hmm. like they in their minds they're doing the right thing because here they are trying to find this like cure all for humanity, but it's through this like murdering a whole town through pollution. So mm-hmm. of course, when we find out Annie finds out about that, we know why she got. I mean, we got real <laughs> stories like that here at home, like with the whole Flynn water in Michigan. That shit's crazy, dude. But. But yeah, no, that that dude, to me, did you believe like at any point did you believe that those all those scientists would at that point like murder this woman or did you yeah. were kind of a little bit you did? Okay. I felt that like would I mean like I can understand maybe one and the other guys just kind of like looking and you know being like, "All right, I'll help you cover it up because what we're doing here is bigger than life." But yeah, like I kind of like found it hard to believe that all of a sudden all of them just started like kicking her and you well, know stabbing her, yeah. I think it's putting yourself into their place, right? Think of being in this facility, yeah, isolated. Yeah. yeah, yeah, being isolated, being stuck in this facility, like, you know, nothing but man, like just the same people interacting over and over. And then you become, like, you find this, you have this discovery that you said greater than life. 
and then they just become obsessed and imagine being Nobel, obsessed. Nobel so Prize long. worthy. Yeah, just yeah. And may, the Kajin become imagine becoming obsessed so much that that is your whole life. Like literally, that's all they care about. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, wouldn't you like yeah. at that point, like anyone would have walked in there and you're like, no, hell no, like you're not taking this away from me. Yeah. Like this is legitimately my like, yeah. Now I'm picturing Sheldon discovering something <laughs> that was because of Penny and then him having to kill Penny because he doesn't want to give her the credit. <laughs> well, they, yeah, they were, like, yeah. No, I, I, yeah, you're right. Because, you know, they always, they also made the point to say that these men never left the, the base. Like it wasn't like other stations where like somebody would come and relieve you after a while. Like these men just never changed that. It was always dumb, always dumb. Yeah. And I mean, we found out that the one guy obviously had the victim as a girlfriend, but we don't really know if these other guys ever had any other interaction with any other women in the in the, in the village it didn't that. seem like it because i mean that was the whole thing that made the whole annie case story so good was the fact that they, she did have a secret affair and that there was only the one scientist that kind of basically was doing that um but at the end of the day i really do like that it was kind of a, a romantic well not a romantic it was a horrible death but i think that the, when he was dying, lying about the fact that he didn't hurt her at all, but then you see mm -hmm. the scene where like she he doesn't quite him. die and she like starts to wake up and he just starts to like smother her. Like I, I don't know, like whether he loved her or not. Clearly, this discovery was way more important, and I think that just kind of talked more about the nature. And, and I don't know, I don't know if that's justified because I don't know if anyone else can really say like cool like get, get rid of this whole town through pollution and all these things when you in reality are going to save humanity like I don't, I don't know i don't know if it's justified no no i no, i agree man it's just uh it's one of those things like when you know hey in order to get results we have to do this like why not be open about it you know like be open about it but obviously because of the whole murder i think that's at the end of the day like you shot yourself in the foot when you did that to that, that poor huh? poor girl yeah, yeah. No. I, I see what you did there yeah and, and then and then how they solved it did you guys ever picture that it was going to be no. all those women <laughs> no Dude, not I was at all because you know there was like 20 minutes left yeah and i was kind of like thinking like oh my god if they don't ever explain like if we don't see like a like if i don't see how these men really die like it's gonna upset me and i'm gonna like riot but because i remember hearing people and i'm gonna say bitch about how it ended and i was confused i was like I'm like, why did, why would, why would people, and like somebody was defending it, like, hey, you know, like to me, what, how it ended, it kind of made sense because, you know, you're following the story and, you know, like, he's like, I was in shock with the ending. So it made me wonder, like, why was there a negativity to it? But I, dude, I thought it was perfection because it makes sense. Like, you always respect your cleaning ladies, man. You always respect, oh, people yeah. They're doing these <laughs> services for you. My mom being a cleaning lady, I stand by the, <laughs> it's, don't piss them off either, man. Yeah. But no, I, no. Mean, I thought that was like a great review. I thought it played yeah. really well. I thought it was like it left me being like, oh, okay, cool. Like that's awesome. Like I think that was really cool that they all came together and took their own revenge on these people. Yeah, I, I was definitely not expecting that at all. Like I was expecting possibly like the cop or 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 the mind people doing something or or something supernatural for real, but not like a, a group of the the village ladies. But I mean, mm. there was a supernatural thing because at the end of the day, something did kill them, and that's the supernatural whatever did kill them, and to the well, point where the like cold. they ripped their eye. <laughs> the cold. No, they I said mean they would be able to come back. They're like, you know, we threw them out there, and if you know she didn't want to take them, they would come back and they would find their clothes and so, be okay. So that's another thing that we didn't talk about, and I know we're, we're towards the end, so we don't have a lot of time. But it's like with Navarro's sister, right, uh, and her mother beforehand, like they were dealing with some like I wouldn't say mental illness because that that's exactly what the show wanted you to believe. But it was clearly a tie, like tied up with some spiritual like beliefs, right? And it was more not necessarily deteriorating at the mind, but it was more of like connecting to the spiritual world where these spirits were like like come like follow me like be freed by like walking into the middle of the frozen ocean which her sister did do and that was kind of also really a sad moment for navarro yeah. um but i think it played beautifully when peter had to dispose of the bodies and he's like oh take me where like her sister went mm -hmm. to say her goodbyes it was beautiful but no yeah like there was still that that yeah there was still the supernatural element that never went away because i think above it all and um, above finding out that it was the cleaning ladies who cost this that there was the things that were unanswered right like you always had the sense of like spirituality and, and what's real or not jody foster went through it when she fell in the lake as well or in the ocean as well because then she had those visions of her son like that's who really called her into that like dangerous or, situation yeah 
or or or, or Rose when she saw somebody oh. that's supposed to be dead. And Her husband. That, that, yeah. yeah, and that's how that's how she found the bodies. Yeah, yeah, and so the, and it was the same thing too. Like even even at the end, right? Navarro, like she walked off, or at least that's what the show oh, made yeah. me think that she also walked off into like the vast openness. Yeah. And and I think the the her it's that the they're next. talking about, I don't know if it's like nature or or maybe it's the spiritual being that you know they all kind of believe in or what it is. But I I think ultimately it was still really beautiful to have that because. Yes, the tongue is one of those things that it never really explained. So, but you do you do see her at the end, though. Like you do see her with Jodie Foster. Yeah, and but not, Foster walks out and and, and and gets her and then brings but her not, back. But, and, but no, no, but no. But well, yeah, yeah. But like, remember the scene where she's like, and whatever happened to Officer Navarro, and she's like. I don't know. Like yeah, you yeah, may never see her again. And mm-hmm. she walks, and I don't know if it was meant just for that scene, but like Danvers leaves, walks out into the porch, and she sits down, and then Navarro just kind of appears and stands on this like doorway with yeah. the sun shining through, which to me was very like open door into like the afterlife. Come on, man, guys, we talk know. about this, this all the time, this, but yeah, this this is reminding me of freaking Batman, the third Batman Rises or whatever, where it's like Michael Caine at the end. It's like sees Batman oh, sitting yeah. across the, the table and it's like he nods in it in. It's like, okay, or whatever. Was that, it's like, was that real or not? It's another yeah. one of those. <laughs> I, I think, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I'm saying it left it like that to me. Yeah. That okay. scene at the end with Navarro, I felt like Navarro died also. Like she uh, walked see, I wandered like off. She didn't. No, I felt like she didn't. Uh, but again, I think it's just how they played it. I know. <laughs> you just want to see everyone butt naked, Carlos. I just feel no. like if you're gonna go into the ocean to kill yourself, you gotta get butt naked. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean I did like that they kept that. I don't know who took the tongue. I don't know who put the tongue there, but it's like I don't know. I, yeah. I think that's that's a part that I'm okay with. Like I like these little bit of elements of like that of like mystery or dark. But yeah, or that kind of started the spark. Supernatural. Like them really diving into the you know the mystery of it. If it wasn't for the tongue, like that wouldn't they might have just said like, "Oh, missing scientists," and like they would have just called it, you know, like, "Oh, okay." But like yeah. they saw that there was like a bigger picture to this. And there's more that we don't know because, like, I mean, in in the past when I looked up things about the other seasons, um, especially with like the season one and the cults and all that, like, there's things, yeah. definitely things that tie more to this. Like, I've heard more of like Lovecraft uh, approach to this season, and that there is like little Easter eggs and things that do point to like stories. And more supernatural things, so maybe it is kind of deep diving into it more through seeing other people's like actual analysis of it to like understand better. I, but from the perspective of this, where I will be in the first time he's seen any true detective, like I just I loved it. Dude, I just it was so good. Dude, I hope I that this sparks like okay, guys, like true detective is back on. Like we gotta just get the best celebrities, the best story, and like really hit it like going forward i mean it's it's impossible even fargo has had like two really not great seasons but it's just like i do hope that they use the momentum from this season to like build up on like the story and like okay people really want to connect these by having the spiral mystery and like yeah Ra- 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 ramon if even if what you said about like rose and her husband possibly being related to like matthew mcconaughey's character that would be freaking awesome like i yeah. would love that kind of connection to it yeah absolutely um can I say like a thank you to True Detective season one for for uh, something it did that I don't think people really talk about? Mm-hmm. But the the one thing I want to say about True Detective season one, I think it's the reason why a lot of a a like a celebrities started doing like television, started doing like Netflix, Hulu, FX. It's because I think people when True Detective came out, like people recognized like oh my god, Matthew McConaughey and uh, what's his name, um, Harrison. Woody Harrison, Woody, Woody Harrison. Woody Harrison. Harrison. They're doing such great acting. This is freaking amazing. Can't believe you can tell such a great story in like 10 episodes. And I think from that, a lot of celebrities took note like, oh my God, it's possible for us to like sign on to a show, do an incredible first season, and then be done with it and be recognized for the, for our work. And I think it's like True Detective is truly what started that. I think before True Detective, there wasn't really a lot of uh, big time celebrities like taking on shows for the recognition, maybe just more for the money. But I think after True Detective, like, yeah, that's the reason why we see a lot of these celebrities like taking on Netflix or Hulu or you know these shows because of, because of True Detective season one. So I'm always thankful for for that because again, I know you gotta see season one and wake up to know what what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, Spiral's I mean, taking in. <laughs> t- TV's um, come a long way, so <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, and 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 I don't know, I'll, I'll watch it eventually. 
Yeah, no, it's no pressure, man. Unless there is really like a big connection, you were like, oh my god, no, I gotta... no, there's something. Yeah. yeah, nothing directly connected like that. Um, but I, I'm a fan of cults. I, I saw the the killing or whatever with uh, Kevin Bacon. Which one? Oh, the killing the F the Fox show. Yeah, it's a Fox show, right? <laughs> I don't know like, if yeah. it's Fox or whatever it was. So it was but it was Fox a show, Fox, right? It was Twitter, a show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that too. To to a point where it just got a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, it got um, a little weird. Ro, there's something that I do want to confess with you because if I don't say this and I, you know, we don't talk about it, I don't know when I can bring this up to you, but I sort of feel like me and Ramon might have done a little bit of cheating, you know, because something happened between the both of us that we didn't tell you about. But me and him did go see last minute Godzilla, uh, the new Godzilla movie, the, the new Empire, whatever it's called. Oh, I saw so, it on Sunday too. Oh, okay, great, great. Because me and Ramon saw it together, and you know, so me, and and Joe, <laughs> me and him were like, "Oh, well, Ro clearly couldn't didn't come with us." But it was a last minute thing. But you know, we saw mm-hmm. that movie. <laughs> and to be fair, Raul, it was just because there was no third seat. Oh, mm-hmm. then we were like way up in the front. <laughs> we were in the front. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. which surprisingly made the movie better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got yeah. yeah, a little whiplash going like, <laughs> like. I just want to say I had a lot of fun watching that movie because it was so dumb that it made it so good. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, I, 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 I think those types of movies, there's some movies that you don't watch them because they're good. You, you just watch was, them because they're fun. They're fucking. That was freaking fun. Yeah. And fun. King Kong's words, fist pump, yeah. Dude, I, <laughs> like, like Twice. I'm always gonna, be, I'm always gonna be a Godzilla fan. Like that's that's my guy. But dude, I feel like you can't have another Godzilla movie without Kong. Like Kong just brings so much to the table. Like I never realized it, but like he just brings like a lot more than Godzilla. He has so, so much I just personality. Like, yeah. Personality. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you, yeah, you felt the loneliness for him. You felt the longing. You felt the the pain of his tooth. Yeah, I oh mean, yeah, I gotta... the pain of his tooth. Oh poor guy, <laughs> man, he was so miserable. I, I wish somebody would talk about how he's probably gonna die from radiation in a couple of years, just from always being up on like climbing Godzilla. on Godzilla, and yeah, <laughs> like nobody talks about that. And, and taking the the breath on the axe. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But yeah, no, I need more of these movies to come out sooner. I might go back and rewatch some of the old ones because I've actually saw a video of uh, Dan Murrow talking about all of them. Yeah, I know. Uh, so like some of them actually yeah, look really I, fun. I haven't seen it yet. It's, it's yeah, some of the top 20 look actually really fun. <laughs> but yeah. Right. Well. True Detective, man. That was it. We did it. You know, Night Country. <laughs> It's uh, We can put it behind us, row. Yeah, and... great show about some kick-ass women that kick ass. Yeah. In the uh, cold, in the, in the night, cold. <laughs> and and make jo- uh, Jodie Foster get some. Yeah, that's what you want to take from me. <laughs> getting some, woo! And uh, <laughs> Navarro did too. Oh, she got plenty from that bar. Poor bartender couldn't even keep going. She almost killed them. <laughs> took his punch bob's toothbrush. That's all I was. Oh, she gave him back. She gave it back. Never mind. She, but, see, yeah, she was yeah. saying, she was saying her goodbyes though. That's what she mm-hmm. was doing with that stuff. Come yeah, on, she guys. was gonna become a vampire hunter, and ah, yeah, no. <laughs> that's that's the fifth season we're getting. All right, guys, I'll talk to you. Bye. <laughs>